unless there's anything else you want to touch on uh, in terms of retrieval augmented generation, um, you know, and how uh, uh, applying more plugins to your workflow that are integrated with pieces uh, can, you know, help fuel this, this rag, this regrounding of the AI, um, then we can jump into some demos. Okay. Well, let's, let's jump in demos and you know me, I can, I can talk and show at the, the same time pretty well, yeah, go for it. Um, but I'll go ahead and pull up my entire desktop app here. So, um, so real quick, as just a refresher, you can see this is my pieces drive. It's got all different types of things saved to pieces and everyone has known and come to love a lot of the uh, enrichment that we do with machine learning. So when I paste something and save it to pieces, um, we're gonna go ahead and tag that thing, classify it, enrich it with all the link links and searches and uh, all types of good stuff. And so when we think about context, um, you know, a good informant of the context that you have is the things you've saved. Uh, we'll talk about shadow saving here at the end of the, the chat, but um, basically the co-pilots are available obviously on a per material basis. So you can go ahead and open that up and you can jump right into that discussion. It'll prompt you with some questions that are relevant to this context. But most importantly, we've really focused on the context at large being powered via your workflow activity, um, the things you have saved, and as well, context that you might set on demand. So I'll jump into a demo here and I'll show you what the global copilot is capable of um, and how we're able to take you know, large language models that are a bit smaller in parameter size uh, but make them really, really A plus in their responses. So if you install Pieces OS, you'll note that you have this little indicator down here. And this is where you get to choose what runtime you're using. For me, I'm on a MacBook Air um, and I have 24 gigs of RAM um, and it's an M2 chip. And so, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and say 7 billion uh, parameter model with GPU. Um, if you're unsure, feel free to reach out to us. But as well, if you want to be online, you want to have higher context windows, or if you want to use, you know, um, larger, uh, more advanced models up in the cloud, you have your open AI options um, and Palm 2 options are coming early next week, which is really great. But back to the local stuff. So I've already downloaded both the CPU and GPU models. So I'm just going to go ahead and you can come in here, select which one you want to use and it'll be set down in the bottom corner. So if I'm over on the cloud, I set GPT-4, you'll see it reflected down there. But for this demo, we'll do local 7 billion llama um, GPU accelerated. So after I've chosen my runtime model, one of the ways to make this a bit better is the context. So I am in my workflow here. I want to go ahead and say, you know, I was referencing this tutorial. I'm going to copy that tutorial link and I'll paste that into pieces. So we'll save that. And that's going to go out and get all the context from that website. And then as well, I want it to reference some of the things that I've saved uh, from earlier in my work. So maybe, you know, some stuff about WebSockets, uh, maybe some stuff with, you know, uh, client connections. I'll go ahead and save those too. And then lastly, you can also add a folder. So I have a directory where I was doing some gRPC stuff um, and uh, talking to the local models. I'll choose that folder and that's going to be set as well. So now that I've got my context set, I can go ahead and ask a question. So I'll start out, you know, treat your model friendly. Hey, how are you? Uh, and this will kind of give you a, a little example of the, the speed test. So we're doing a small cold start once that model is initially loaded into memory. And we'll see. There we go. OK, so it looks like it's booted up. And that's because, again, as Mark mentioned, we unload that model to respect the RAM usage on your device. Um, but now I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, I need to get started with some Dart stuff um, to get started with some WebSockets. And you can see it's going off because I already set that tutorial as context. So it's talking about chat room sessions and server.dart and, and everything like that. Um, but I'll say, um, web sockets for this dark project and I can never type on live demos uh, we will go ahead and let this let this finish up here but you can see it's got some pretty high fidelity outputs and it's actually coming in uh, quite quite fast okay it's telling me basically how to be an expert programmer uh, <laughs> I appreciate that yep definitely helps thank you <laughs> Uh, now we'll get to some code generation. So uh, I need to get started with some web sockets for this Dart project. And let's go ahead and see. It's also proactively figuring out some follow-up questions that I might want to ask. 
Um, so, but we've got this in process. I'm using the GPU. Okay, great. So yeah, it'll say, hey, here's some dependencies. And fun fact, you know, Dart is um, not a very common language. So even for models that, you know, maybe haven't trained uh, on a large corpus of Dart examples, you know, that context that we're providing there is going to uh, really, really make it nice um, when it comes to the syntax and the fidelity of that output. So it said, hey, pull down this package, you know, go ahead and, and take a look at your main function here, you know, connect to localhost 1000. It's ironic because all of my connections that I've uh, demoed with are localhost 1000. So it's anticipating what I'm actually going to connect to. Um, it's got some stuff about, you know, basically securing your WebSocket and then sending a message. Um, so I can say, you know, how can I support uh, multi-channel uh, WebSocket connections? Go ahead and do that. Looks like I looks like the related question actually got uh, or the related follow ups got tucked down here, but. We promise it won't it won't continue to stack those up. That's just a little uh, little bug on the UI. So yeah, let's see what we got here. So coming in with the connect, multiple WebSocket servers simultaneously, and this code generation is actually pretty pretty solid. Um, tracking each channel, connect to them. The first one, nice. The second one, great. We'll let this finish up, and I'll show you what we can do. You know, after this is this is done here. Um, this is just demoing the, the capabilities of, you know, hey, I'm running on a MacBook Air, a 7 billion parameter model with a ton of context. Yeah, I, I think an important thing to note here is that this is the, the 7 billion parameter Llama 2 model here. This is as small as you can go to get a, a model locally on your machine. And it's pretty incredible how, how quality the output is, especially um, kind of augmented with RAG, you know, as opposed to, um, you know, GPT-4, I, I think it's it's um, a bit unknown how large it is, but it's been guessed that it's closer to three, 400 billion parameters. And um, so this is 2% the yeah. size of the size of that. It's uh, or less than that. Um, and it's, it's pretty incredible. We can get uh, such a good output with the, such a small model. Yeah. And I mean, it even just said, hey, wait on all the connections here. You know, go ahead, iterate over them and, uh, you know, listen for uh, incoming messages. And, you know, you can see I can go back and forth all day long. I know Caleb's going to demo some of the stuff inside of, uh, you know, VS Code. That copilot is going to be regrounded and available there. Um, but, yeah, I'll just note, you know, from this generative process, if you want to make the next cycle of generation better and you know you're working on some of this stuff, go ahead and save something to pieces. Um, and, you know, now that's available for future context. But also, if you just want to explore things you have saved, uh, you can say, hey, find similar snippets. Right here, this is my kind of offline Google Drive for all this stuff, um, or Google search, I guess, and drive. But it'll show you related people. It'll show you other relevant, uh, you know, kind of snippets that you have. It'll show you related links out to the uh, documentation that might be associated, all types of good stuff. And you're like, hey, nothing here. I'm going to go ahead and just resume that Copilot chat and keep going. So uh, all types of really, really interesting stuff that's going on with the Copilots. Um, and we'll talk more but I won't get ahead of myself.